We are looking here in this video at a very interesting definite integral. It's a tricky one. I am Mr. Ish. Thank you for joining me. Look at our integral. 0 to pi over 2 sine theta divided by sine theta plus cosine theta and d theta. Theta here is our independent variable. We have to integrate and solve this and how would you do it? To do something like this, you're thinking about an integral property I presented not too long ago. In a separate video, I'll include the tag to that video with the information for this, but it's a very interesting property and it's not a very commonly studied property. You have something which looks like this. This upper limit can come right over here and you'll end up seeing the property play out like this, a minus x dx. You see how this came right over here? Well, when I'm looking at this, my a here is equal to pi over 2. You manipulate this original integral using this property right over here and look what happens. 0 pi over 2 and in that previous video I proved that this here is equal to this but you can see that video anyhow use this property and modify this you're getting here a sine pi over 2 minus theta you see how the pi over 2 has come right over here and you'll do the exact same thing with the denominator functions you'll have here a sine pi over 2 minus theta plus cosine pi over 2 minus theta and d theta this right here represents an original integral which I'm calling an i. It represents an integral, my original integral, we're calling that an i. But look what we have over here. What we have here is something for which you can use your co-function identities. And you know these identities. The sine of an angle in terms of its complement is equal to the cosine. The sine of an angle is equal to cosine of its complement or you can say cosine of an angle is equal to the sine of its complement and you will bring these co-function identities into here and you'll manipulate this. When you manipulate it, sine pi over 2 minus theta, you're getting a cosine theta in the numerator. And look what's happening here in the denominator. This is going to give you a cosine theta and this right here is going to give you a sine theta. Now this right here was my original integral. Now look how my original integral is modified into this. By means of this integral property and by means of the co-function identities, I've manipulated and changed it into this. But this also represents my original integral. It's modified, but it is equivalent to your original integral. If you take these two integrals and you add them up, and why are we adding them up? Because there's a commonality. What's the commonality? It's the denominators, they're the same. And just like adding fractions, having the same denominators, the numerators will add. Look what happened, the numerators add. You'll have a sine theta plus cosine theta divided by, well, the common denominator is the same. Order does not matter around a plus sign. It's exactly the same denominators, and this is what you have. These cancel out. So in essence, what you end up seeing here is this entire integral is equal to 0 pi over 2 d theta and you know the antiderivative here is theta from pi over 2 and a 0 when you compute that your outcome here is a pi over 2 but 2i is equal to pi over 2 therefore i is equal to pi over 2 divided by 2 which is pi over 4 and that would be your answer to this if someone were to ask you what's the integral output for this specific definite integral it's pi over 4 not this because it's incomplete. 2i is equal to pi over 2, therefore i is equal to pi over 4, and this right here is your answer, and it would be right. By means of employing this integral property and the cofunction identities to push everything through. Have a good day. Bye.